President Trump, whose chief of staff announced yesterday that the G7 summit next year is going to be held at Trump's Doral Golf Resort in Florida. While Democrats and some Republicans are screaming conflict of interest here, the White House maintains there's nothing wrong with it. So who's right? Chris spoke with a Washington Post reporter whose beat is the president's businesses for his take. This is a little something Alexander Hamilton wrote in the Federalist Papers before the Constitution was written. Quote, one of the weak sides of republics among their numerous advantages is that they afford too easy an inlet to foreign corruption, end quote. Seeing this potential, the framers wrote two emoluments clauses in the Constitution. The first says federal office holders can't receive any gift, money, or thing of value from a foreign state. The other says the president can't receive any payment from our own government or U.S. states beyond his or her salary. I was aware of the political sort of uh, criticism that we come under for doing it at Doral. Now to the president and the controversy at hand. The G7 Economic Summit will be held at Trump's own property. The White House says it's the perfect location and they won't accept any profits. Democrats, like House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, said the Constitution is clear and no one is above the law. Others echoed the sentiment. If he were a township supervisor, he'd be in jail for that. Even Judge Napolitano of Fox Business went further. This is about as direct and profound a violation of the Emoluments Clause as one could create. We Skyped with Washington Post reporter David Fahrenholt. I cover the Trump Organization as a business and the conflicts of interest that it produces. So this is specifically up your alley. Oh my God, yeah, this is like the perfect story for me. What did you learn today? The most important thing is how much money comes out of it. How, how is he going to make money? Who is he going to charge and what's he going to make? And we've gotten very little information about that. All we've heard from the White House is he's going to do this at cost. He makes yeah. zero profit from this. Would that be a violation of the Emoluments Clause? The Emoluments Clause doesn't say thou shalt not make a profit off business with foreign governments. It says you shouldn't take payments from foreign governments. And also, who can check it, right? Trump is the buyer here and the seller. He's negotiating with himself. And so if somebody thinks that the you know what he calls his cost is too high, who's going to call him on it? How does the American public and journalists alike vet the process? How are you going to vet? if he is making profit or not. It's going to be hard uh, because we're dependent on Donald Trump's government to tell us what they're spending in Donald Trump's business. Already we've been asking about that. Even if he doesn't charge enough to make a profit off the actual summit, it provides months of positive press coverage, lots and lots of worldwide coverage of your resort. We've talked to other people whose resorts have hosted the G7 or G8 in the past, and they say, yeah, it brings in tons of business. It gives a, pro a profile around the world. So there's marketing publicity that comes with this that it's hard to put a dollar figure on, but it's really, really valuable beyond just the actual cash you take in for the event. We're literally and if you're wondering for context where the other G8 or G7 summits have been held in the U.S. before, here you go. Puerto Rico, Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia, Rice University in Houston, the Denver Public Library, for real, Sea Island, Georgia, and Camp David, which will likely now be joined by the president's own resort, Doral, in and Miami. You and I have chatted a bunch about this today. So do we know anything about the process of the president choosing a place, or any president for that matter? They get a committee together? Do they look at other places? No. We don't know much Which about no. it. Which no? No, no. So, <laughs> so the Washington Post reporter told me that, that the White House has disclosed that they looked at 11 other properties in the United States. Okay. They have a team, a committee that looks at all these to make sure everything works out. They have not disclosed which properties those are. So reporters and the public, we don't know what he's comparing Doral to. Right. Not to say Doral's not an exquisite place. I mean, it's an obviously a nice place, but we don't know what they're comparing it to. Also, there's one other thing to be mentioned here. The Emoluments Clause clearly states, it's a very short thing, we showed it earlier, that if you receive a gift from a foreign state, you need to tell Congress about it, and then Congress can give you the okay if, yeah, that's ethically cool or not. It okay. says right there, Congress is the check and balance here. Okay. Congress has not had a say in any of this. So if a president is in violation of the Emoluments Clause, what happens? Then there's the other check and balances. Impeachment, voters, these are the only penalties that a president can really face. Interesting. All right, thank you, Christopher.